Hey everyone, I'm Jen. Good morning if you're on the West Coast like me or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where else you might be tuning in from. Um, today, I am so excited to chat with uh, Justina Law, um, Dr. Justina Law. Thank you for being here, Justina. Um, we're gonna chat about Travel Photography 101. Uh, the title is, the subtitle is Learning to Capture Stunning Images at Home or Abroad. Um, so thanks, Justina, for being with us. Uh, it's great to have you. Hello, thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'm gonna kick off into our questions, but first I wanna just read your bio so everyone has a little bit of a sense for who you are and what you've got going on. Um, Justina has an amazing background. She is a high school administrator, counselor, and the owner of Ambiance Yoga, uh, which specializes in personal yoga, photography, and adventure retreats around the world. Having explored over 120 countries, she brings a holistic approach to her teaching, balancing mind, body, and spirit. Uh, so that's a little bit about Justina. Um, we're going to chat about all things photography related today. And if it's okay with you, I'll go ahead and kick off into the first question. You ready to dive in? Absolutely. Let's go. Cool. So let's talk, let's start kind of at the beginning and let's talk a little bit about equipment basics. Um, for non-professionals, what would you say the bare bones essentials are? And then what are maybe a few upgrades that are worth considering? So at the end of 2019, like end of November, I had the really um, misfortune, I guess I was traveling in Guyana for a weekend and my very first day there, I was uh, mugged and physically assaulted. And uh, because of this, like everything basically was taken from me. I hadn't been carrying my camera um, outside, uh, knowing what type of a, a place Guyana was, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but it was inside the backpack that was taken from me. And along with, you know, multiple lenses and other equipment. And that, um, unfortunately, because it was Guyana, I didn't get a full police report. So I wasn't able to cover a lot of things by insurance, which meant mm. that I had the opportunity to rebuild my kit from scratch, right? And so it's actually just very recent where I've been, I guess, um, balancing between like, what are my priorities? What are my needs and the costs? Because photography, is it can be a very uh, expensive hobby, right? And so it's a, a fairly timely question, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've been searching and looking for the different deals. What are things that I need to replace? What are things that are must-haves versus what are the things that are just kind of add-ons or nice to have and nice things? The way I travel uh, has really dictated a lot of uh, about it, right? So mm -hmm. in the beginning, when I was first getting into photography years ago, I used to be really drawn to all the bells and whistles, right? The new gadgets, the what's top of the line, what am I going to use? And, things. Uh, and what I've really found is that although I might have the latest and greatest toys, I'm very often not using all of the functions that mm -hmm. are available in that toy, right? And so I go, okay, well, what exactly do I need and why am I going to use it, right? So I think that the first thing that you need to identify is what type of traveler and what type of a photographer are you, right? So we all have different interests and likes and things like that. So you might be a traveler that is really into sports, right? That's probably meaning that you're going to be attending more games, things are moving very quickly, you're going to need a higher processing um, camera than if you are a landscape photographer that wants to um, set up your tripod and maybe you're waiting for hours sometimes for the right sunrise, sunset, cloud, that deer that comes by, that's right. That's a, a very different type of technical aspect. So what I found is there used to be a big discrepancy like 10, 15 years ago, or, or larger anyways, between the different types of cameras and lenses that you can get. Nowadays, most of the companies have kind of caught up to each other, 
right? So Sony puts out a great product, Nikon puts out a great product, Canon puts out a great product. And the differences between each of those cameras and the different technical aspects is actually very slight. If you go into any art gallery and see photographs from photographers, you're not probably not going to be able to pick out which camera they used unless it was written on there or they specifically told you. So number one rule for me is to find a camera that you like and that's comfortable for you. If you have small hands, you don't want anything too large. You know, you know for me, yeah. I hate, uh, I love hiking and things. I don't like backpacking tripods or heavy lenses and things like that. So that is really kind of put me down. Um, in replacing my kit, I went, oh my gosh, I used to have, you know, carry around five or six different lenses. I'm not going to be able to afford to replace all of them at once. So what am I using the most? right? Uh, am I doing mostly landscape photography? Do I want to do macro, right? So every lens has a specific purpose. And there are basically five different types of lenses that people do. Uh, there are the specialty lenses. So for example, the fisheye view, um, your GoPro would be a good example of this, right? Where it has a really wide um, angle but it makes a lot of things look like you're in a bubble, right? So you can see the entire world is very spherical. Um, if you really like close-ups of things, whether that's wildlife or flowers, means you're probably gonna wanna carry a macro lens, right? And then you have your fixed or your zoom lenses. Those people that are taking a lot of people photos that um, shoot a lot of sports or things where you're really at a distance, but you want to be able to see people close up, you're going to want a closer zoom lens, a telephoto lens, but the more, so the closer you need to be while you're further away, it puts more and more glass in between you and that object or, or subject. And that means that it's going to be heavier and it's also going to be slower, right? So if you have a telephoto lens, then you're also going to need a more stable tripod, for example, right? Because it's just so heavy that I know for me, and um, let's see. So in here, I've replaced my kit with two basic lenses so far. This one, just the lens itself without the camera is heavy, right? And so if I'm trying to shoot wildlife, there's an animal in front of me that's further, a little bit further away. I don't want to disturb it. I want to see it. Or maybe it's uh, unsafe to be close. You know, a, a bear, for example, we get those up here, right? <laughs> um, I want to be far away or in my car, or, you know, safe distance. And, you know, I'm going to want to make sure that I can actually hold it really steady so that I get the clear shot that I want. And you probably saw me just now unwrap my lens. These are amazing cloths that I found that mm. they're almost like a Velcro. They're very, very protective. Uh, I use them for my cameras. I'm not so great at carrying around camera bags. So I need other ways to protect my lenses. And a really good lens just to have would be an all purpose lens. And you can talk to uh, any knowledgeable rep in a, a camera store that will, you know, point you in the right direction that would be still affordable. That's, you know, um, if you say, I'd like to be able to take close ups as well as the further away, you're going to lose quality for flexibility, but it's always a balance depending on what it is that you want to um, tell with your story. Yeah, that's great. Like so many things, <laughs> it's always a balance. Um, I I wanted to talk a little bit about um, kind of scouting locations and this ties in a little bit with kind of what you were just saying about different uh, functions depending on kind of what, what you're shooting. But um, if you're arriving in a new place, like what do you sort of generally look for in your scouting in terms of interesting subjects or great lighting or any other kind of factors that you might want to take a pulse on kind of right right when you land on the scene? 
I think it depends on how long you're going to be in a place, right? Whether you have a lot of time or you're only spending the day there or, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but number one is going to be researching. You're probably not just chancing upon places, specifically if you're traveling, you probably have a destination in mind and you've probably already done research, like looking on websites, you've probably seen brochures. There, there's going to be a draw for you to go to that place in to begin with right mm -hmm. um but once you're there what i find sometimes is you know you want to first look at what are the iconic photos right so what are things that are things are known for like if you're going to chicago you're going to go to the bean right uh then you're going to want to look and see you know do you want lots of people in your background in your photo in the bean right maybe you don't want to pick lunchtime right <laughs> maybe you want to put um, other areas. Are you really interested? Some people chase sunrises, some people mm -hmm. chase sunsets, right? Uh, maybe that does or does not matter to you. Maybe you are looking for specific reflections. Maybe you're trying to capture different lighting. Maybe you just want yourself to be there. But once you look at those iconic type of photos, um, in the brochures, postcards are really good inspiration for things like that. And you go, you know, mm. this is the photo that I don't really want to miss. Mm -hmm. But then take a look and see if there is a perspective or a different view that you can bring that may be unique, right? Um, the one thing that I really love about photography is that it really pushes you to be present, which kind of ties into my whole yoginess, right? <laughs> um, but you really have to kind of step back and observe, like be aware of all the different details, the things that might be special. There are going to be things that are special maybe on that particular day that you're there or the time that you're there, as opposed to when all of the postcards were taken. Uh, don't be afraid to take risks. So often the best photos are the ones that people rarely see right so there aren't usually lots of people outside taking photos in the rain right or when right. it's cold when it's really windy right you have to if you want the spectacular wow photo you're probably going to have to take you know one extra step climb one step higher go a little bit further you have to be willing to be uncomfortable crouch down really low see if you can <laughs> change your perspective right and then the number one i think virtue for photography if you want a good photo is that you have to be patient and um, friends that I travel with, they are constantly waiting for me, right? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Just waiting for that group to move, right? I'm really careful when I look at, you know, they're like, well, people could be in your photos. Yeah, I don't mind people in my photos, but not the girl with the neon pink dress. Right. Uh, so it just depends on how close you want to be to that subject, uh, what you're trying to capture, what you're trying to tell, what your audience is going to be. I'd say, you know, observe, notice details, look for patterns. If you see that there are birds in the sky, they're probably doing a circle. Right. And so if you wait that extra two seconds, you're going to be able to capture it when it comes back and circles through or notice where do they tend to land or what's capturing their particular attention. Are there children that are chasing them away? Are there right? Are there large crowds that come crowds themselves? They tend to come in a pattern as well right? Uh, notice when the light turns red, when the crossing pedestrian sign goes, right? If you see a bicycle from really far away, you probably know that it's coming closer towards you. Do you want the bicycle in your photo? Do you not want it in your photo? So it's partly about anticipation as well and paying attention. And sometimes it's just about being in the right place at the right time. But um, most often times, you know, we are pretty predictable <laughs> and um, it, it really also helps you if you can speak to locals, right? So I'll often mm -hmm. go into maybe my hotel concierge and, and say, you know, 
if you were going to watch the sunset, where would you go? Right? Maybe not necessarily where I'm seeing all the rest of the tourists go, right? Mm -hmm. But where's your favorite place to see the reflection or to watch the rain? Yeah, that's beautiful. I love the way that you tied in so so much uh, philosophy in terms of changing your perspective and being patient and not not wanting to shy away from discomfort because there there really are a ton of things that are related to to yoga and to you know different contemplative practices. So that's that's really cool. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I kind of speaking on a related note, you know, because we you touched on that you might be ph photographing people. Um, if your desired subjects are people, um, but you're a little bit shy or you're just trying to be mindful of not overstepping boundaries in terms of courtesy or cultural norms, um, how do you tend to approach situations like those? So I think that we've all seen the National Geographic um, photo shots, right? Where you go, wow, th those are people's livelihoods and that's what I want to go. You have to remember that most of the people that are photographing for National Geographic or, or other magazines and, and other uh, related categories like that, uh, most of them are on assignment, right? Mm -hmm. If you yeah. yourself are just walking through the market and you want to capture things, try to remember that there are always, always, always going to be more opportunities for photos no matter so if you're walking through a market and you have your camera and you're putting and you see that someone is hesitant for you to take their photo at the end of the day um you know you can turn the corner and there's going to be another person in the market right that you could take and that doesn't mind if you take their photo right um there are lots of cultures that aren't used to cameras, uh, although I would say that that's getting fewer and far between, especially with uh, cell phones now, right? Where sure. people are very used to getting things, but you may inadvertently be capturing someone's vulnerabilities, right? Mm. They could be embarrassed about what they're doing. You might think, wow, there's you know all these people doing their laundry in the river, Right. Oh, I really want to capture this. This is right. Um, and they might not want you to capture that because they are either embarrassed about what they're doing or they may view, you know, this is their bathing ritual. Um, it could be sacred to them because, you know, so always be really mindful um, and don't hide. You know, I, I used to be, you know, you know, when you have a telephoto lens, you go, oh, okay, well, they don't see me, you know, um, I, what I found is if you make eye contact, you smile, you're open and present, right? People will genuinely be more receptive to people that are authentic. And I think that that's what you want to capture in your photos anyways. You don't want to be that person showing off your photo and being like, ha ha, right? I got this person when they weren't looking, but they really didn't want me to take their photo, right? Right. Um, in a cultural setting, uh, sometimes it helps to have a local with you, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's really about garnering trust and showing people that you are an authentic person and that you are not a threat to them, right? Oftentimes I'll show the photo that I've captured either, especially if someone is a little bit more shy or more hesitant to have their photo taken. I'll take the photo of the lady in the market and then I'll show her. This is the beautiful capture that I have of you, right? And if they don't like it and she's like, no, right? I'm happy yeah. to delete that photo because at the end of the day, it's never ever worth it to make others feel uncomfortable, vulnerable, violated, um, ignored, dismissed, or, or even, I mean, ironically, as we're talking about capturing and taking photos, but like they're going to feel as though they're unseen. And, and what I mean by that is, is their feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. If you knowingly and willingly are happy to ignore people's feelings, then I think that that's where we kind of um, 
lose our impetus or our purpose for travel in the first place, right? So travel, I think for myself anyways, is supposed to help us to grow um, in empathy and in connections. So even just amongst my friends or family, right? Some people don't like being in photos or they, they don't, you know, they want don't want photos of themselves and they go, oh no, are you gonna post that on your social media? Don't post any photos of me. Okay, you know what? Because I have a thousand other photos that I can choose from to post anyways that don't make you feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I, uh... I definitely, it resonated with me when you shared that about like, oh, I, you know, if I hide, I won't make somebody feel uncomfortable because maybe they don't see me, but you're totally right. Chances are they, they probably do see you. And yeah, being sneaky is definitely not, not probably the best approach. Um, those are all, yeah, all really good, good thoughts. And, and also I like how you shared sometimes help, helpful having a local along with you, um, which is another, you know, reason to seek out uh, local people and, and give them employment one way or another as a guide, or, or maybe you connect with someone on a personal level. But um, I think those are two really good tips that I'm going to take with me. Um, in terms of composition, for my next question, could you share like a few kind of simple hacks that that might be interesting both to people who are complete novices like, like myself, um, and people that are that have a little bit more training or experience under their belts. Hmm. I think that we've all heard the rules of photography, right? So don't put the subject in the center of their photo, or the rule of thirds, or make sure that there's a line for your eye to go outside of the photo, something that draws you out, right? Uh, I think that the most important thing is to know that it's okay to break the rules. <laughs> and <laughs> I have friends lots of times where I'm like, can you take my photo and I'll set up what I think is the perfect photo, which uh, to be honest, there's there's never really a perfect photo, right? Because we all bring our own unique perspectives uh, to behind the lens and into the world, right? So what I think is going to be a perfect photo may not be what somebody else views as the perfect photo. And, and we have the same thing when we look at art or music, that not everybody's going to like the same thing or want to read the same types of books, right? But it will resonate with some people. And so oftentimes I'll look at the photo when they're finished, right? And I'm like, oh, strange. I thought you were going to take it there. Yeah, I didn't want to put you in the middle of the photo. Oh, okay. But in this particular photo, because the perspective is this way, or et cetera, I, I wanted to capture that, right? Or they'll move it because they said, okay, well, as far as the rule of thirds go, right, we want to have, you know, less sky, or I want it to be an extra even plane or things like that. I think as far as composition goes, you have to try to think about the mood, the feeling that you want to create, and then what the focus is for you, right? Um, where do you want people's eye to go? And one of my, I guess, number one rules for me is that the photographer always moves, right? So if you have somebody that says, can you please take my photo, right? I don't say, uh, can you move to the left, right? Just a, a little bit more. Oh, no, no, two more inches, right? Okay, now turn your head, turn your, no, I can, <laughs> I'm the photographer, right? I'm the one with yeah. the camera. They can't see what I can see. They have no idea that a rogue child just ran behind them. And now it looks like they have Mickey Mouse ears sticking out behind them. You know what I mean? Like they, they don't know that someone dropped their car. They don't know that the sun's gone behind the cloud. They're really focusing on how long do I have to hold this smile or this pose or this, right? Particularly yeah. if I'm um, uh, photographing like yoga and, uh, teachers and I do a lot of that. And uh -huh. they're really like, you know, trying to hold the, the pose and stuff. So what you can do as a photographer is reframe things, right? Start looking at compositions from behind the lens, right? Mm -hmm. um, because you get to see all of those moving pieces. And then don't be that person that takes 10 shots that look exactly the same. So sometimes I Guilty. have, <laughs> like, yeah. 
I'm like, hey, can you take my photo? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then I get back and they're like, I took a few, so I'm sure one of them will work for you. Like, Great. And Very then I identical. And I'm like, every single one of these is identical. There's the same shadow. You didn't move the same focus, right? So yeah. at the end of the day, you have to kind of play with it and have fun and see what it is that's interesting to you. Chances are it's going to be interesting to somebody else as well right and actually going back to your last question i think that that's one of the things for people as well if you show a genuine interest in what they're doing instead of just being i really just want to get the photo right they're going to be more open and more receptive and you're going to be able to i think you're going to be able to see the energy in the photo right to really yeah. capture the essence of what it is that you're looking at or trying to to view so yeah I love those thoughts because trying to you know best intentions I think I've I've fallen into the trap of trying to manage you know the the subject of the photograph okay move your head to the left or whatever and there's like no better way to make somebody kind of like freeze up and become unnatural than to try to manipulate them from behind the lens so yeah all really really helpful thoughts to keep in mind um my last question was just going to be around, do you have any tips? Because like a lot of us aren't quite back to, to traveling yet for obvious reasons, uh, especially traveling abroad. But people who are excited to get back out there, itching to kind of get out and practice their photography skills, anything you'd share for, um, for people who want to kind of start practicing locally? Uh, any thoughts there? Uh, no matter how often I use my camera, I always find that there's more that I can learn about it. So right now we have I mean, hopefully more time to spend, right? But like actually read the camera manual, know mm. what functions your camera has um, and that so that you can get the most out of whatever equipment it is that you have specifically, even if that's your um, iPhone or Android or, you know, try using some of the other settings that are there. Look at the pro pro settings, right? Uh, what happens when you manipulate things? A really good way to do that is to look at different filters, right? There are filters mm -hmm. that you like and filters that you don't like, but very few people will actually look at what it is the filter is manipulating. So if you go in and look at the settings of the filter, you go, oh, I see, okay. Um, my face looks softer because there's a little bit less of a, uh, or more of a lens blur, right? Or there's a little bit less contrast. I don't know if I like contrast or not, right? You can actually play with those things, right? Do you like vivid colors? Do you like deep contrast? Do you like, shadows right um what is it that you're trying to tell with your story um i have grown up my whole life like constantly wishing that i was a little bit taller right <laughs> so i go hmm, <laughs> me too <laughs> what happens when i take a photo on my tiptoes what if i reach my hand up a little further right I don't need necessarily a zoom lens, but even if I reached, if I'm holding my camera and I'm reaching out just two inches makes a difference, right? What if I tilt it slightly forward or back? Or if I'm, um, one of the, a really fun thing to do if you have children, if you have an older camera or um, like, you know, you know, please see what kind of a perspective they give you, you know, with a, a two or three year old running around. What do you see? Oftentimes they're looking up, right? So they're constantly doing this to take their photos. And you're going to see how that elongates everything. Everything looks super big to them. The people, the buildings, the trees, the world, right? Yeah. And so it's a really fun time, I think, to play with your natural surroundings, the things, objects that you have at home, right? Uh, it's really just like any hobby or any sport or anything that you want to be good at, you want to practice, 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 practice. And, you know, gone are the days where when I was a child, I used to have a, a camera in which there was a um, the old school film, right, where I would have to take it into a shop for processing and, right? yeah. and you have to pay a lot of money <laughs> to get that back. And I was always my dad has always been 
Uh, he's always had a, a really great photographic eye, but he's also been my photo critic, which I think that, you know, at a young age, I, I maybe wasn't as grateful or appreciative of that. <laughs> but looking back now, right, I'd always be really like waiting. I'm like, oh, I hope he likes my photos. I hope I didn't waste his money. I hope I didn't, right? <laughs> um, but right. We would, we would spend hours and hours looking at these photos and and he'd, he'd say, you know, do you like this one? Do you not like this one? What do you like about this one? So really now when we have this time, take the opportunity to try new things to like, who cares if your photo is too dark, delete it, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, but see what happens if you change just one thing, right? And then you're going to be able to, I think, kind of um, have a greater discovery on what you like, what other people like, and also why you like it. You can take the exact same photo and crop it 10 different ways and go, hmm, okay, it's a different perspective. Oh, I'm not sure that I like it this way, or I really love it this way. You, you're gonna be, I think, um, pleasantly surprised at what you can discover and what you can do right here at home, right? Even when you're talking about sunset photos, every single minute counts, mm. right? So the first photo that you take versus the 30th photo that you take of the exact same mountain, at a different time of day makes a big difference. So, yeah. That's great, thank you. And my last question is pretty simple. Um, just where can our listeners uh, find out more about you and ambiance yoga and your travel and photography retreats? Well, I try to, uh, my yoga and photography retreats, coupling them together, as we've talked about in here, right? I find that it cultivates a, a lot of mindfulness and there are a lot of overlapping features between that. It's one of my favorite types of retreats to run. It's very thematic. We often will choose, you know, like one day we're going to talk about perspective. So your perspective behind the lens on your mat and also out in the world, right? We talk about balance, similar ways. Um, right now, of course, with the pandemic, I don't have any retreats that are planned for the near future. I'm kind of waiting to see uh, what's going to happen things, but you can always follow my adventures either on Facebook. I'm um, mostly on Instagram is the best way to get a hold of me. It's at justina.ombianceyoga.com. Uh, I also have my website, which is ombianceyoga.com. Uh, any of the, I guess, a typical uh, social media venues. So, and I'm happy to connect. I love meeting new adventurers or people just have any questions or just want to talk about the things that they're doing and seeing. And I can't wait to be able to get out and explore the, the world again. Yeah, right on the same page. And I'll add all of your, your handles and your website to the comments. Um, and thank you so much for doing this chat. I feel super inspired to get out there and put my my camera in the hands of my two-year-old and and also just photograph things that are mundane and everyday because you've given a ton of inspiration so thank you so much for for chatting with us today absolutely thanks for having me all right take care everyone have a great weekend bye-bye